So I've got this coworker who is training to be a pilot. He's already done a lot of real life flights here in Jacksonville, and he's been looking to get into flight simming because of the bad weather in Jacksonville. Sometimes he just can't really get out there in real life. So he would like to actually train at home to get more quality time with the controls of the airplane and just how the airplane feels in the air. And also because training obviously costs money as well. So to offset some of that training cost, to offset some of that lost time. He wanted to get into flight simming and that's where I come in. Now this coworker doesn't have like 10K to just throw down on this flight sim thing. He's just trying it out. He just wants to get his foot into it. And the flight sim that he wants to play is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now he asked me if he should either get an Xbox Series X because that is the most cost-effective way to play Microsoft Flight Simulator or if he should get a gaming PC since he knows that I'm kind of into that. Now, if I wanted to, in the short term, save him the most amount of money, I would have just told him to get an Xbox Series S or X and just download Microsoft Flight Simulator and do it that way. But I know that he's actually training to be a real pilot. So I wanted to set him up right. I was looking into the future. I know that he might get into VR. He might want to buy a particular flight simulator rig that maybe is not compatible with Xbox, right? Something more high end, something that has just more compatibility. And that's kind of where I suggested to him to actually spring for a gaming PC, more specifically a custom gaming PC, because he's going to be able to save the most amount of money if he goes custom versus pre-built. Now I am somebody that actually likes to build PCs as a hobby. And I told him that if he purchases all the parts himself and just drops them off in my house or comes over and builds the computer with me that I'm not going to charge him any fee. I'm just going to build it with him. I'm going to show him the ropes, see what it's like to build a computer free of charge. I just did it for fun. And I also picked out all the parts that he should buy. I was doing my research and this is the kind of build that I came to the conclusion of. And that's what I wanted to make this video about is why I picked this particular build and why I picked the parts for this build. Now he is primarily going to be using this computer for flight sim purposes. So I wanted to build around that game, but I was also thinking forward as well and thinking about, well, if he's into flight simming, he's eventually going to want to get into VR. And you'll see that he actually did try my VR headset, my Quest 3 through virtual desktop in flight sim on his rig. And he was totally into it. Now he actually even wants to get a Quest 3 himself. So with that being said, the first thing that I asked him was if he wanted a white and black build or and all black build. And the reason I asked white and black is because some components like the motherboard and the GPU are actually going to be more expensive if you pick the white version. So we did have to make a compromise. And that's why I said, do you prefer a white and black kind of stormtrooper type of look? Or do you prefer an all black look? Because that's where he's going to save the most amount of money. If he goes all white, he's going to spend more money than he has to just for the color of being white. And honestly, that's personally what I do. I do like an all white build, but to save money on each component, I do spring for the black or silver, black and white look. I also have that type of build. I have a silver, black and white build because those are the most cost effective parts that I could find and it looks good enough. So the next thing that I did was choose the motherboard that he was going to put all his components on. There were several motherboards out there, Gigabytes, MSIs, Asus's, uh, but I actually landed on an ASRock 850M Wi-Fi board. And the reason I did that is because this one in particular has really nice white accents and silver accents at the same time, which really complement the case that it was put into. And also the Wi-Fi part is pretty important as well. Him being a new PC gamer, he's probably not wired for ethernet or anything like that. So having that Wi-Fi option is pretty important. And also the price was really good on this motherboard as well. Now I could have gotten a cheaper b650 board but with those older boards you do have to update the bios to work with 9000 series amd processors and i just didn't want to go through all that there are some motherboards which you can update the bios through a flash drive without a cpu but i just didn't want that extra headache and the new b850 motherboards were only 20 to 40 dollars more 
anyway so it wasn't really that big of a deal but so far i'm really happy with how this motherboard looks i think it looks real sleek in this case and the case that i chose for this build was actually not my first choice. My first choice was this case right here. It was actually a really compact case that would have pretty much had all the parts fit into it perfectly, but I actually made this last minute decision to get the NZXT H6 Flow. It was $75 and actually comes with three fans. The reason I chose this case was because I was recently in North Carolina and I actually stopped by the Micro Center in Charlotte and I saw this case for sale for $74.99 and I thought it was a great deal. I thought it looked like an amazing case and I also have an NZXT case for my build. Mine is an H5 Flow and I think that NZXT makes really good cases. So last minute I told him to not order that compact case from Amazon and actually to order a NZXT H6 Flow and I think that's the right choice because if he ever wants to upgrade the GPU in the future which he probably will let's say two three years down the line maybe he's more into you know the flight semi thing maybe he's already a, an established pilot and he's making a lot more money well he's probably going to want to upgrade right maybe he wants to upgrade to a 6070 Ti or a 6090 when it comes out right well this H6 Flow is going to allow him to do that it has plenty of space in fact it's actually even bigger than my h5 flow and my asus tough 5090 fits perfectly in my case so pretty much any gpu is going to fit in that h6 flow and yeah i think i made the right decision this case looks absolutely amazing and i was actually jealous i actually wanted to almost swap my case for his case because of how good it looked now for the cpu i had him get the amd 9600x i could have gotten something a little bit cheaper like an intel 12600k or something like that i didn't really want to get an older generation cpu i wanted him to get the newest generation platform so he can upgrade if he wants to to something more significant if he wants to maybe in the future get a 9800x 3d or if the next generation of 10 series series AMD processors are going to also be on AM5. He can upgrade to that CPU, but I think it's going to be good. Unless he gets something like the 5080, right? Or maybe even like the 6070 Ti. Unless he gets one of those cards, the 9600X is going to be absolutely fine. It's already a really powerful CPU. I mean, unless you're hitting like over 350, 400 FPS, that CPU is going to be able to keep up with pretty much any game out there. The only reason I have the 9800 X3D in my system is because I have a 5090 and the 5090 is obviously going to bottleneck something like the 9600 X but he's pairing it with a 5060 Ti, which actually perfectly goes into what GPU I chose, and that is the RTX 5060 Ti. Now, initially, he wanted to get the 8 gigabyte model because it was cheaper, but I told him that is just a bad idea. There are a lot of games right now that are coming out that are gonna use that 8 gigabyte VRAM, especially games like Flight Simulator that are really heavy on the textures, really heavy on the streaming, and you really want as much VRM as possible. So I had him spend a little bit more money, more than he wanted, but he eventually broke down and got the 16 gigabyte. And honestly, that was the right decision. He's gonna be good with this GPU for pretty much any game for a long, long time, especially if he's not playing at 4K or anything like that. The one we got was the PNY because it was the cheapest at the time. And I actually think it looks really clean with this system. It's not like the most flashy graphics card out there, but it really matches the whole black and white aesthetic and it looks super clean it actually is the same exact length as the entirety of the motherboard it doesn't extend further out or any less it is literally the same exact length as the motherboard and i think it looks super sleek in that build the only con is that it still uses that eight pin connector now for a lot of people that is not a con but the power supply that I got, which is a Thermaltake 750 watt, which actually comes with a dedicated 12 pin Gen 5 connector for the new series of RTX graphics cards. And I think that one single cable would have looked a lot cleaner than this eight pin, which has that little extra connector in the bottom that kind of sticks out. So unfortunately this card does not come with that connector, but for a lot of people that is a positive because you can use your older power supplies. For the CPU cooler, I had them get an AIO from ID Cooling. This is the same exact cooler that I have in my system and it's been good for like two and a half years now. So I was pretty confident to get this product for him because it's been working great for me. The temps are great. I haven't had any issues with mine. And the biggest reason I went with this one over an air cooler is because it already comes with the fans on the top so instead of buying an air cooler and then buying 
two separate case fans for the top portion well now he can just use the aio and its fans as an exhaust already unfortunately though the one he got had a pretty messed up led that keeps blinking on and off and half of the leds are like intermittently going in and out i don't have this problem with mine so he still has a choice to warranty it out but then that comes with the headache of reinstalling it and all that so i just told him to just just let it be don't worry about it and you know as long as it functions correctly uh that's not a big deal and then last but not least for the ram we got a kit of 32 gigabytes of t-force ram this one's at 6,000 mega transfers per second cl30 this is actually the same ram kit that i have in my system and it's been really stable it's been working great so i was pretty confident to have him buy the exact same kit because it's been working great for me and so far it's been working great for his system as well so that's pretty much why i got that ram and yeah the first thing we did was we installed windows 11 and then he bought microsoft fi simulator from the windows store uh initially we tried to buy it from steam but it wouldn't let us buy it for some reason it kept holding our money so we were having issues with that but we were able to buy it from the microsoft store and then we were having issues with booting it up for some reason it kept just boot looping so uh, we did find a workaround and the game finally booted up and it already uh, gave us like these optimized settings i think probably from the nvidia control panel or something like that and the settings that we landed at were uh, all medium settings with dss at performance and times two frame generation and that's actually one of the biggest reasons why i got an nvidia card rather than getting an amd card was because of the frame generation for microsoft fi simulator if i got an amd card we would not be able to use any frame generation and also the dss transformer model is just absolutely amazing i mean microsoft fi simulator in performance looked like native 4k it looked absolutely amazing the textures were super clear and i was just amazed at the visuals and the fps was really good too with frame generation it was rocking like 90 to 110 fps and i think that is perfect for a fight sim game the next thing i had him do was try out my quest 3 headset so i downloaded virtual desktop on his computer and we booted it up we booted up flight simulator and all you got to do in microsoft flight simulator to boot up vr is just press control tab and it boots right into vr super quickly super easily and initially we were having a lot of performance issues and what i had to do was i had to just go into virtual desktop i changed the resolution from the godlike setting which was obviously set for my 5090 and put it down to the medium setting and then i turned on space warp which locked the fps to half rate and then interpolated the rest of the frames up to the refresh rate and the refresh rate we set it at was 72 and with these settings we were getting a constant 72 hertz the actual in-game fps was about 36 but it never faltered it was just steady at 36 frames per second or 72 interpolated i even tried on the headset myself and it looked pretty good not as good as you know my 5090 system with all the settings at max obviously but it looked pretty good like he was amazed he even flew one of the airplanes that he flies in real life for training and he said the airplane looked exactly the same and it felt very similar to what it did in real life as well and i pretty much got him hooked he was not even thinking about getting a vr headset before he arrived he was going to use a monitor but after using my quest 3 he was amazed at how you can just look around and see all the gauges and everything and you can even interact with the gauges with your quest controller as well so he's going to now start saving up for a quest and i will even give him one of my spare battery head straps as well to make it a little bit more comfortable and the flight controls that you see him using are called the honeycomb aeronautical uh, i guess apparently this is like one of the best rated flight simming rigs you can get i don't know anything about flight sim so i'm not sure if how good it is or not but from my initial little research online it's some of the best and he said that he read the reviews and it's he said that this is one of the best fight sticks and fight little rigs that you can get as well and when i tried it out and flew with it i it actually felt really good all the buttons felt really high quality the packaging was great the the steering uh stock or whatever you call it a steering wheel was really really high quality as well everything felt great i actually landed one of the airplanes too and it was a really cool feeling i don't know he almost kind of got me into fights i mean i might uh download uh, microsoft fight simulator 2024 and maybe you know try it out maybe uh, i'm gonna get into it because now i have the pimax crystal crystal light i'm pretty sure i've got the super coming pretty soon as well so yeah i'm definitely gonna have to check out some 
fight sim 2024 so yeah what do y'all think of the build let me know in comments below i think it came out pretty nice but i want to know what y'all think as well thank you for watching and subscribe like this video and peace out be blessed